thinking, Jamie. He calls out as I walk over Sandy Ground Bridge. I recognize his voice. I know it's him, but I don't see anyone. There's a glint, a movement. I stand on my toes and peer over the edge of the damaged railing. There he is, sitting on a strut under the bridge, perched precipitously, precariously, in a little square of shadow. His wide, toothy grin looks up at me, secure and safe, standing in the midday heat. I wave. He says, you good? I say, yeah, and ask how he is. Just that smile. In my three years, I, in my three years here, I've seen Jolly many times. At first he scared me a little with his unexpected movements, but at the same time I was drawn to him. We pass each other nearly every day as I walk to and from the boatyard, always in neatly pressed khakis. His beautiful, shiny dreadlocks fall over his shoulders. He walks barefoot everywhere. He smiles, and he smells of coconut. I, too, live at ground level, and I'm close to the life around me. The hurricane changed us. It changed the land. Poverty and insecurity surround us. They say this area is dangerous. It's just the opposite for me. Now we are all equal, briefly, equally, all messed up. All mash up, the kids say. I want to be here, on my boat, in sandy ground, even though everything is a mess. I walk on the flat, hot road to Marigot. Vestiges of the storm clutter my vision. Mountains of rubbish, torn up vegetation, bent, broken fences, and glass everywhere. Smashed up cars line the roads. To the right, battered remnants of boats, their mouths all tipped over. Decay hovers in the air. Vines creep over the boats as they deteriorate in the scorching sun. Abandoned boats are too expensive to repair and too costly to break up. My sweat-damp eyes squeeze shut to block out that image. I try not to think of what could happen to my precious little sailboat. To the left, the Grand La Plage Hotel, gutted ruin. The sea surge ran completely through the building. It left piles of broken chairs, tables, chandeliers, oversized flower pots and moldy grapes to rot. Under the rubble, there is no music from the once melodious Oceanside Lounge. The upper rooms are safe. Homeless people live there, like mice sheltering in abandoned luxury. As I walk by, Jalim materializes out of the hotel rooms, and he startles me. His voice rings higher than one expects in a man. His childlike behavior unsuited for his man body. He shouts and waves a moving silhouette before a petrified facade as if he hasn't seen me in months. Jali also hangs out at the Chinese grocery. Sometimes he asks for bread. Sophie, the cashier, gives him baguette. I have no refrigeration. I buy food every day and ice every two days. Jali sits there on the stone wall, eating the bread in little pieces. I worry about him. One day, Vincent, the electrician, drives me to the hardware store for supplies. Jali is hitchhiking. We stop the truck and pick him up. Squeezed into the front of the cab, he turns to us and smiles big. Then he asks to be let out at the next corner. I ask Vincent about him. I'm sure he has family, Vincent says. I think he's cared for. People here know Jali. I wonder, though, does he remember who I am each time he sees me? Or am I just a passing stranger in his life? It is two long years since the hurricane. I help out in the schools. We try to mend our damaged boat. There's little money and materials are scarce. There is no sailing, no going anywhere, only repair work and cleanup work. Then COVID hits St. Martin and we get stuck. The island is not yet recovered from Hurricane Irma. Buildings are half in ruin and roads are still torn up. Thick black utility lines dangle hazardously from house to house. Many people have no home. Some people though have hope to fix what we love, to fix what is broken. During lockdown, we can go out for brief periods to the shop or to the beach. Jali idles on a vacant lot as it cut across Am Sabla, the beach in front of the hotel ruins. He walks with me. He says, be careful. Thorny weeds, cactus, wasp, iguana, they everywhere. He warns me again like a child. They be broken things, be careful. Water laps against a dislocated jetty over boulders heaved up from the sea. Tiny clouds line up like a cotton ball train and skim the horizon. As we reach the shoreline, he abruptly turns and walks away. Sometime later, we meet again. 
He's standing in front of the grocery. He senses something's wrong. All these months and no progress. I can't fix the boat. I can't fix what's broken. He offers me a small ting mango from his tree. Where's the tree, I ask. He just smiles. He asks me questions. He doesn't wait for answers. He tilts his head and he tilts his head towards me to hear the unspoken name. He smiles. I tell him I'm leaving soon. His brow furrows. More questions pour out. Where, when, he says. I feel the pressure. He never talks so much. His slender arms open. He wants to hug me. He knows to be gentle. He whispers, where's Holland? You be safe? You come back? I hug him. I smell the coconut. His silken cheek next to mine. How could he know I won't be back?